Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. Okay, Tulani the entrepreneur. It's scorching hot outside and you're busy selling cakes during my period. Bring those cakes to my desk. No, 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 no. Bring those cakes to my desk, Tulani, or you want to continue with this lesson? So as much. Sorry, guys. Today we'll be learning about tropical cyclone. What is a tropical cyclone? The definition. Yes, Tulani, put them under the table. Thank you very much. A tropical cyclone, a low pressure weather system, which occurs in late summer, early autumn, and they occur between five degrees to 30 degrees, whether Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. And they move westwards. Yes, they move westwards. Unlike mid-latitude cyclone, which moves eastwards. All right, let's write it down. I said they are what? Low pressure. Weather systems, which occur late summer, early autumn, between 5 degrees to 30 degrees latitude, and they move westwards. Remember, this is our cross, never eat sour worms. So this is our westwards. Unlike mid-latitude cyclone, which moved to our eastwards, these ones move to our westwards. All right, let's break the definition down. Firstly, we understand that this is a low pressure weather system. A low pressure. What did I say about low pressure? I said low pressure, it is associated with rising air. All right. Then we also know that it occurs late summer, early autumn. Why late summer, early autumn? Because of the ocean takes time to heat up and create a low pressure area, right? So let's continue. And it occurs between 5 to 30 degrees. Why between 5 to 30 degrees? Because of between 5 to 30 degrees, there is Corellus force. A Corellus force, it is the force which is responsible for deflecting the air movement according to the rotation of the earth. So it is very responsible for the deflection of the air movement when it comes to the southern hemisphere and when it comes to the northern hemisphere. All right, then we move to our last point, which is westwards. This whole weather system moves westwards. Unlike mid-latitude cyclone, which moves eastwards, this one moves westwards. Why does it move westwards? Mainly because of the wind, which we call tropical easterlies. Yes, tropical easterlies are responsible for this cyclone. And where do you find tropical easterlies? Between 5 degrees to 30 degrees latitude. Whether north or south. Okay, and for you to better understand tropical cyclone, I definitely have to draw a sketch. Before I do so, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hey, my guy, comment. All right, let's continue. So this is our latitude line, which is our five degree latitude line. I said it occurs between five degrees to 30 degrees. Why? Because of from five degrees to 30 degrees, there is Corellis force. I've spoken about Corellis force. Watch the video I've dropped before this one. So which ocean are we going to be using? Because of I'm from South Africa, we'll be using the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean, it is also found in the subtropicals, right? So this is our Indian Ocean, right? So in an Indian Ocean in summer, which season are we talking about? Late summer, meaning there has been direct insulation from the sun from December, January, and February. So late February, the ocean begins to warm up. Why? Because of there was what we call direct insulation from the sun hitting the Indian 
ocean right so when the indian ocean has been directly insulated by the sun from december until the end of february it will obviously start to warm up so there will be an area on that indian ocean which will start to warm up once it begins to warm up there will be now evaporation we know once the kettle starts to boil there will be some smoke or steam coming out so there will be now what we call evaporation when does evaporation occurs it occurs when this area begins to reach a temperature of 27 degrees or they could say 26.5 degrees so 26.5 degrees evaporation begins to occur so in this area when there is evaporation rising air now will obviously have what we call a low pressure because of a low pressure it is associated with rising air so this area which was directly insulated by the sun will begin to have evaporation rising air and when rising air begins to occur this area will now be empty right and when this area it is now empty we know i've spoken about this on the video before this one that air pressure moves from a high pressure areas to what we call low pressure area so the air will now begin to move from high pressure areas to try and fill up the gap which was opened by the rising air right so as this air rises there will be a gap air pressure moves from high pressure to low pressure so there will be cool air moving towards the low pressure areas so this is what we call our cool air and this is what we call our warm air right when that happened we know what's going to occur but before we reach that point we obviously have to remember that when air pressure moves from a high pressure areas to low pressure areas it will not just move straight it will obviously rotate according to the rotation of the earth this is where coriolis force comes in what did i say about the coriolis force i said the coriolis force deflects the rotation of the air it is very responsible in deflecting the rotation of the air according to the rotation of earth right so what do we know that we know that this is the immature stage then we're obviously going to move to our mature stage how are we moving to our mature stage we are moving to our mature stage in this fashion because of this tropical cyclone it moves westwards right we must remember it moves westwards and also what will happen when it moves westwards it will obviously move to our 20 degree mark no longer our five degree mark okay why 20 degree mark which means further south why are we not moving further north mainly because of we know that between zero to five degrees there is no correlates force meaning the clockwise rotation of this rising air will not be possible so this tropical cyclone will move further south right so as it moves further south and this rising air continues to rise it will obviously reach an area which we call a troposphere so when this warm air reaches a troposphere it will obviously diverge the air the warm air will begin to diverge and as it diverges it will begin to cool off and we know that when warm air cools off condensation occurs so big big community nimbus clouds will be formed big community nimbus clouds will be formed in between these two areas where the warm air has diverged right so in this area where there is a rising air this area is given a name and this area it is called the eye so this is the eye of the cyclone right it is called the eye right in the eye what is the weather condition in the eye in the eye there are no clouds 
meaning there is no precipitation and there are no wind. There is no wind in this eye. But then in the sides of the tropical cyclone, here we are going to say this is before and this is after the tropical cyclone has passed by the land. So before it reaches the land, heavy precipitation occurs. Lightning thunderstorms will occur. And even after it has passed by the land, heavy precipitation will occur. And thunderstorms will also be involved. All right, so now we know the weather conditions that are associated with tropical cyclone. We have to like the video, subscribe to my channel to show our appreciation to Madagascar because of Madagascar saved a lot of people in Deben. Yes, Madagascar is the reason we do not get that too much tropical cyclone in Deben, guys. Madagascar receives all the effects, guys. So, in Madagascar, there will be obviously heavy precipitation, strong winds beating. Obviously, what will happen? Houses will be flying. People will be swimming and dying over the, the water and electric cables will be destroyed telephone cables will be destroyed a lot of things will be destroyed when this tropical cyclone passes by your land guys this thing is not safe so the government has to obviously come up with a strategy on how do we have to manage the effects which come with this tropical cyclone before we come to the management it will obviously now reach the dissipating stage obviously after it has Passed by Madagascar, it has obviously lost its strength. Why does it lose its strength when it reaches the land? Mainly because of its source of energy is from the ocean. The warm, cold, the warm area from the ocean, it's its source of energy. So when it is reaching the land, it loses its source of energy so it loses its power so once it obviously moves out of madagascar coming into Deben and mozambique it is already weak so it comes into Deben, smashes a lot a smaller nyana houses in numlazi and we are crying obviously it's painful guys but then you must look at what happens in madagascar all right so when it reaches Deben, it will obviously do what uh, hit a lot, a uh, few Nyana houses, then it turns back in the 30 degrees latitude. It turns back moving what eastwards on a 30 degree latitude. What other things you have to know about the tropical cyclone is that if it is occurring in Asia, the parts of China, it is not called a tropical cyclone. It is called typhoons. Yes, they say they are typhoons. But then if it happens, in the southern part of America, it is called the hurricane. Yes, a hurricane. You must remember, it occurs between 5 to 30 degrees, whether northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. Guys, this is a flipping easy topic. Like this video, comment, subscribe. Uh, guys, okay, what about the management? Let me talk about the management. They obviously have to tell people that are living in the low-lying areas to move because of this thing is coming. This thing is very dangerous, guys. And they will obviously have to have some alarms and build some sea walls. So if when it reaches, it obviously can bounce from the sea wall back into the ocean. So guys, you have to do a lot of research by yourself and I hope I became a lot of help for you guys because of this is easy. You just have to know the ocean, direct insulation, rising air, diverging, communion bus clouds, heavy precipitation and the management. And what also do you have to know? You have to know that they change their name alphabetically in each and every season. So per season, they change their name alphabetically. If in one season it occurred five times, it will now be called A, B, C, D, E. It can be called Emmanuel. Yes. So the fifth cyclone can be called Emmanuel because of its letter E. Right. Guys, concentrate, take screenshot, like this video, subscribe to my channel because of I try to bring you tropical cyclone in the best form of fashion. 
So now let's move to what we call anti-cyclone. Okay.